All right, well, apparently a lot of people want me to talk about the Assassin's Creed 3 ending, and to be honest with you guys, I want to talk about it too. Now, first of all, a fair bit of warning and a lot of bit of logic if you haven't beaten Assassin's Creed 3 yet and you don't want spoilers, don't watch this. It's a video about the Assassin's Creed 3 ending, so yes, there are going to be spoilers in here. However, if you've beaten Assassin's Creed 3 or you just don't give a shit about spoilers, welcome friends. So first of all, before we talk about the Assassin's Creed 3 ending, we have to set up the Assassin's Creed 3 story. And the Assassin's Creed games, actually, they take place in the year 2012. Shocker, I know, it's crazy, right? But Assassin's Creed goes on the premise of genetic memory. When you pass your genes on to your kids, you pass on those memories, and they pass on their memories to their kids. It's not like it's a conscious thing, like they remember the past just vividly, the past of their ancestors. However, at the genetic level, they are in there. And so if you can access them, you could see the past. Enter the Assassin's Creed story and enter Desmond Miles. Desmond is actually a bartender. He comes from a long line of badasses, though. Very long story short, Desmond goes into this machine called the Animus where he can see the past lives of his ancestors. Because of that whole genetic memory thing I was talking about. And that's when you're playing as the assassins, when you're playing as Altair, Ezio, and now Connor. And each one of these assassins has keys to a puzzle which will hopefully lead to Desmond saving the world. Because as the Mayans told us on December 21st, 2012, the world's gonna end. No bullshit, that is the premise of the game. So at the end of Assassin's Creed 3, you're in this cave temple thing, you go through this door and you're like, all right, I'm gonna save the world. And you're greeted by the holographic AI images of Juno and Minerva. Who are they? Well, in the course of the Assassin's Creed story, you learn that there was an ancient civilization long before us. They were really technologically advanced, but they couldn't stop their own demise, so they all got wiped out. But they were technologically advanced badasses, and they knew that this would happen again to the next civilization, which is us. So they laid out the groundwork for Desmond Miles to save the world. So Juno's there, and she's like, all right, Desmond, all you have to do is touch this orb, and that big solar flare is not going to cook people like the movie Knowing and shit. Then Minerva comes out, and she's like, no, don't do that. Juno is actually trapped in this cave temple thing. Thing. And if you do that, if you touch that orb, it's gonna free her and she's gonna enslave mankind. No solar flare or anything like that, but you're gonna live under the boot heel of this chick. Bitches be crazy. Then Minerva tells you it's better to let everyone cook and die free people than to live as slaves. Desmond's also told that if he lets the solar flare come and wipe everyone out, there will be a fraction of civilization that does survive. He will be one of them and his name will be passed on as a prophet and then a god. And then his teachings will be used to enslave people and, you know, like crusades and murder. Basically, the life cycle as we've known it will happen again. So you're like, okay, cool, game choice. The game's gonna let me choose the ending that's badass. But it doesn't. It just kind of rides it out and chooses for you. And that's not really a big deal. It's just kind of an annoyance. It's not like I played Assassin's Creed 3 thinking that I would get to choose the ending. Now, there is the argument that they want to make Assassin's Creed 4. And if they're gonna make 4, they have to have a definitive ending to 3. You can't just choose. There has to be like, hey, for lore's sake, this did happen. However, this little nitpick of not being able to choose the ending isn't why people are pissed about the ending to Assassin's Creed 3. It's because this is the conclusion to Desmond Miles story and this is how it concludes. Desmond chooses, he's like, no with the solar flare wiping most of humanity out, there's no hope there, but if we do this, if we save the world, we'll release Juno, but we can still fight her off maybe, possibly, one day, maybe so he walks up, puts his hand on the orb, just fries his brain, he falls over dead and it's done. Then Juno looks at Desmond's dead body and she's like, you played your part well Desmond, but now it's time for me to play mine she steps over his dead body, walks right into the camera and that's the end. Bitches be crazy. That's the end of Desmond's story. Now to be clear, I don't think Desmond Miles dying at the end of Assassin's Creed 3 is a bad thing. I think that's actually a good call. I think he should die. Him giving his life to save the world shows how much he's grown. I'm just saying the execution of it made it abysmally just useless. These really abrupt cliffhanger endings, they're not strange. It's not like it's out of the blue. It's pretty par for the course for an Assassin's Creed game. All of the endings are like that. It's like, oh, a little bit of revelation done. So the ending to 3 could be seen as, yeah, business as usual. However, it is the end of Desmond Miles' story and that's where they screwed up. Because Desmond may have started out as the looking glass, the pair of eyes that you go through to see the assassin so you can play as the main character, which is the assassin. However, at a point in the Ezio story arc, Desmond became the main character. I know the exact moment too, it was when Ezio was talking to the AI holographic projection of Minerva, and she's talking to him, and he talks to her, and she interrupts him. She's like, please don't interrupt me. I need to tell him this. And Ezio's like, tell who this? And then she looks, and she's like, you have to do this, Desmond. And Ezio's like, I'm confused. Who is Desmond? But Minerva knew that Desmond would be watching this through Ezio. Blew everyone's mind. It blew Ezio's mind, Desmond's mind, my mind. At that point, I was like, dude, Desmond's like some sort of modern day messiah? That's badass. I hope they treat him like such and have him die awesomely. There's this other sweet scene. I think it was in Assassin's Creed Revelations where Ezio just stops and he's like, Desmond, I don't know who you are. I don't know where you are. 
but I know you can hear me. And so he just goes on as to how important it is that Desmond does what he needs to do. But it's clear that everything that happens in the assassin's world is so Desmond does what he needs to do. Desmond is the main character and he's the character that we players came to relate to. You gotta admit a lost bartender who's stepping up to do what's right is more relatable to the male 25 to 35 demographic than an assassin who kills people. Although Desmond becomes a badass assassin who does kill people. I'm just saying, it's, it's true. And from there, they've polished his story more. They've polished his character more they've gone deeper into his past they've showed him step up and become the assassin he needs to be he's like you know what i walked away from that lifestyle but this is who i am this is who i need to be this is my destiny i am stepping up to this responsibility so to wrap up desmond's ultimate ending in about one minute of him going i need to do this <laughs> I'm not dead. that's not enough that's called boba fetting him yeah boba fetted he might as well have had han solo hit his jetpack accidentally and flown into the starlight pit and died and i know extended lore star wars pierce are going to be like uh he actually actually lived through that? Well look, not in the movies and not to me. Boba Fett died there and it was a terrible death, which is why every stupid death afterwards I call being Boba Fetted. I mean, if you look at the story of Desmond and look at the ending, when you hear about it or if you see it on paper, you're probably like, oh yeah, that sounds cool. This guy who comes from a long line of assassins is destined to be one, he leaves it all behind, he goes and becomes a bartender, he just wants to be invisible, he doesn't want anything to do with that assassin world. Then he gets drawn into it and finds out that he has a destiny to save the world and he steps up and he's like, you know what i need to do this because that's the man i need to be it's like this aragornish story kind of a little bit in modern day with a 20 something year old bartender kind of he gives his life and falls over dead doing what he believes is right the man has come so far from being a bartender in new york it's awesome however the execution had all that climb and it looked awesome and then he was like i need to do this 30 seconds poof, dead the ending needed to be a little deeper we needed to feel the gravity of it we wanted to weep i mean desmond's estranged father is with him at the end and desmond tells him to go take a hike because he needs to do this, and he does. But you're not going to have any really strong father-son dialogue. I mean, he's his estranged father, and they've been kind of getting a little closer, at least reaching an understanding through this whole ordeal. A good father-son bonding moment right there, that would have done wonders for the end. And it would have sounded cool, because his father is voiced by Q from Star Trek The Next Generation, so it would have been badass no matter what he was saying. It was like the game makers of Assassin's Creed 3 didn't actually see Desmond how we saw Desmond. We saw Desmond as now the main character, the one that we relate to, the one the story actually actually revolves around. But they killed him off as if he was just the looking glass pair of eyes that he was in Assassin's Creed 1. Like he was the instrument to see the actual main characters who were the assassins, and that's not true. I'm interested to see the next Assassin's Creed. Sure, I mean, did Juno is the entire human race enslaved immediately? Is she gonna try to do it? I imagine she's gonna work with the Templars to do it, you know, because they're all about order through control. Which is ironic that Desmond chose the ending that he chose because I would ultimately see that as the Templar ending. So that's what I feel about the Assassin's Creed 3 ending. The events don't bother me. The pacing and execution, that did. It just kind of makes you feel like, oh, well, Desmond Miles is pretty irrelevant, as was his death. The ending just lacked the gravity of a messiah character giving his life to save the world. That's pretty much the gist of it. All right, so the Assassin's Creed 3 ending, what did you think of it? I'm curious to know. So comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.